guys, it's your boy Brad. My name is Lizel guys. And welcome back to our channel guys. So, it's Wednesday. It's gonna be History and Cultural Facts Day in this channel. So, what we're going to react to for the day is one of the top recommended videos that you guys have asked for. We're going to react on a video named What, what is, is Hinduism? Hinduism? That's right. So, we're gonna figure out or we ourselves are gonna figure out what Hinduism is. I have a slight idea, but of course, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Okay. Alright, so before we get started, guys, if you haven't already, please do hit that subscribe button and also that notification bell so you'll be updated with our latest vlogs and reactions. Also, if you're gonna like this video by the end of this, hit that like button and also let us know in the comment section down below. So, guys, without further ado, let's, let's get, get started. started. Hinduism, the religion of over a billion people is the world's oldest religion and probably the most confusing one to non-Hindus. Some say it isn't even a religion, more a way of life. Hindus themselves call it the Sanatana Dharma, the eternal tradition. So, what is Hinduism? Does YOLO apply to them? And who is this elephant guy? Well, let's find out. If I remember correctly, the elephant is Ganush? Oh, Ganush? I will figure it out here. Hinduism is the world's oldest active religion. It's the result of the merging of the ancient Indus Valley civilization and the nomads that came into India around 1500 BC. Some scholars say it could even go back many more thousands of years. But we won't delve too deep into dates because dates in Hinduism are very, very controversial. But one thing is certain, Hinduism is old, like at least 36 Betty Whites. Hinduism has been around for so long that it and the concept of India itself are inseparable. Hindu and India even come from the same word. Sanskrit was the ancient language of the Hindus, and the Sanskrit name for the Indus River is Sindhu. The ancient Persians who sat across the Indus tended to switch their S's to H's, so Sindhu became Hindu. So the people living across the river became Hindus. The Persians told the Greeks, who dropped that very not Greek-like H, stuck in a very Greek-like E at the end, and boom! India. Romania, India. Oh. Hinduism has a long, long history, but today we'll be focusing on just the core beliefs of Hindus because I don't have the willpower to animate a three hour long video. <laughs> Hindus are a diverse group. Some are strict, dedicating their lives to prayer, while others don't believe in any gods but still follow Hindu philosophy. To make things easier to understand, let's break Hinduism down into seven core beliefs. So, here's my rap about the seven Hindu beliefs. I promised you weren't gonna do the rap. Come on, you're better than this man. Oh, fine. Here's the regular version. One, belief in one universal soul. Hindus believe in a universal soul known as Brahman, a formless, genderless source of all reality. Brahman is the universe and the material that makes up the universe. It's a trippy concept, but think of Brahman as an ocean and everything else as drops propelling out of that ocean. Separate for a time, but still the same thing, if that makes sense. Okay. Two, belief in an immortal individual soul. In Hinduism, souls are known as Atman. Actions of the soul while in a body have effects on that soul's next life. When you die, your soul moves to another new body. This is called transmigration. The kind of body the soul inhabits next is determined by karma. karma. 3. Belief oh. in karma. Karma is action, usually good or bad actions that affect society. For Hindus, karmic actions in the past affect us today and our actions today affect our soul's future. Oh. 4. Belief in moksha. The goal in Hindu life is to somehow get back to Brahman. If a Hindu can do this, they will be freed from the cycle of life and death. This is called moksha. You can achieve moksha by realizing your oneness with Brahman. How you realize this is up to you. For this reason, Hindus pray, lead me from the unreal to the real. 5. Belief in the Vedas. The Vedas are Hindu sacred books of knowledge. There are four Vedas. Hindus believe that all four were divinely revealed to ancient Hindu sages. We'll take a closer look at the Vedas in a while. 6. Belief in cyclical time. For Hindus, there are no beginnings or endings. Time is a series of cycles, each cycle containing four ages or yugas. There's the Krita, the Treta, the Dwarapada, and the Kali. Added together, the four yugas total about 4.32 million years. At the end of each cycle, 
Declining human morality leads to the total destruction of reality. Hindus believe that we are in the fourth and final yug, Kali. 7. Belief in Dharma Dharma is a Dharma. difficult word to translate to English. Proper behavior is the best that I could come up with. Dharma maintains balance in the universe. As long as everything in the universe, like animals, plants and humans, follow their Dharma, then everything will be fine. If they break from the Dharma though, things will be super not fine. Each being has its own Dharma. A lion's Dharma is to kill and eat antelope. A king's Dharma is to rule well. A subscriber's Dharma is to smash the like button and ring the notification bell. For humans, their specific Dharma is usually based on their age and their caste. An old priest will have a very different Dharma than a young merchant, for example. Mm -hmm. So those are the seven core seven beliefs core of Hinduism. Beliefs. With them, you can understand the Hindu mindset. Unlike Christianity or Islam, Hinduism is a non-profit organization. There is no Jesus or Muhammad for Hindus. Yeah. There is no Bible, Quran, or Torah. Instead, they have a bunch, and I mean a bunch, of different sacred texts. Hold on. Wow. Wait, don't they have, uh, or am I thinking of something else? Don't they have sort of like donations as well? Um, people who are into or are Hinduism or in Hinduism, Hindu. don't they? Don't they like um, give donations to the uh, to the temple as well? Yeah. Or maybe I'm thinking of something. Let me know in the comment section. The four Vedas form the basis of the Hindu faith. So let's take a look at them. One, the Rig Veda. The Rig Veda is a collection of songs that praise and discuss ideas like truth, reality, and the universe, oh. along with discussions on war, weddings, and rituals. Two, the Yajur Veda. The Yajur Veda covers stuff such as sacrificial rites and rituals. Okay. Three, the Sama Veda. Sama. Sama literally means sweet song that destroys sorrow. Uh. It is mostly songs dedicated to praising gods. It's different than the rest of the Vedas because it's set to music. Four, I see. the Atharva Veda. The Atharva Veda is my favorite one. Do you want to curse your enemies? Or charm that special someone? Maybe learn to invoke rain? Or discover herbal medicine along with tips on warfare? Like how to make poison arrows? Well, this Veda has you covered, along with a bunch of other charms and curses. It Ooh. even has a curse against cursors. Huh. Avoid us, O oh curse, as a burning fire avoids a lake. Strike him here that curses us as the lightning of heaven, the tree. A link to the Atharveda is in the description, just in case you need a spell to get a wife or another to banish pigeons from your presence. It's I'm checking that link later. It's great. After the Vedas come the Upanishads, which are like a sequel that makes the original make much more sense. They were probably written down between 800 BC and 500 BC, during a time when some Hindus started to question the Vedas. Their ideas became the Upanishad. Huh. Sort of like the, uh, sort of like how the Christians uh, recreated some parts of, or, you know, created the New Testament mm. just so to balance out the Old Testament, yeah. which everyone knows has a lot of killing and genocide involved. So, hmm. The Upanishads are books on philosophy, like we would expect from Plato or Aristotle. They're not Aristotle. saying that the Vedas are, have a lot of genocides and yeah. destroy, destruction, of course. Just the Christians. All about questioning, doubt, debate, and finding the answers to life's difficult questions. A theme in the Upanishads is that people are not their minds, or bodies, or egos, but their Atman. Your soul is you. Everything else is unreal and temporary. After the holy texts like the Vedas and the Upanishads are other less divine but still important texts. These include stuff like the Puranas, the Bhagavad Gita, and the Ramaya and the Mahabharata. The Puranas are like encyclopedias of Hindu beliefs. There are 18 well-known Puranas. The Puranas cover things from yoga, to army organization, to taxation, to the caste system, to hell, gods, and everything in between. The Bhagavad Gita, Gita for short, is one of Hinduism's most important texts. The Gita takes place on a battlefield where Arjuna, a great warrior, refuses to fight. Lord Krishna steps in to urge Arjuna to fight, and their discussion covers things such as dharma and how to live your best life. Arjuna eventually fought after Lord Krishna taught him the truth about dharma. As a member of the warrior caste, Arjuna's dharma was to fight against evil. The lesson of the Gita is that everyone faces difficult choices, but they must act on them according to their dharma. 
no matter how unpleasant. Along with all these philosophical texts, Hinduism has two action-packed epics, the Ramaya and the Mahabharata. The Ramaya, the early of the two texts, tells the story of Prince Rama. In the epic, you find out about his 14-year-long exile, the abduction of his wife Sita, his battle with the evil demon Ravana, and his awesome monkey sidekick Hanuman. Karen, I know Hanuman. The second epic, the Mahabharata, is the longest poem in the world. Five times the length of the Bible and eight times the length of the Iliad and Odyssey combined. Oh. It rivals any soap opera you've ever seen when it comes to drama. <gasps> murder, betrayal, love, love murder, and giant battles. The Mahabharata has it all. The theme running through the Ramaya and the Mahabharata is that Dharma must be followed for society to function. In Hinduism, there are four goals a person should aim for to have a good life. The first of these is Dharma, followed by Artha, the pursuit of prosperity and good reputation, Kama, pleasure both in body and in mind, and Moksha, the release from the cycles of rebirth. Hindus should practice Artha and Kama with Dharma in order to achieve Moksha. There are also six temptations Hindus should try and avoid. Kama, lust and materialism. This Kama is different from the good Kama mentioned above, I know. Next is Kruda, which is anger. Loha, which is greed. Moha, which is unrealistic attachment to things, people and power. Mada, which is pride. And Matsarya, which is jealousy. Oh, okay. sort, of like the seven, uh, sort of like the seven deadly sins. Mm -hmm. Not the enemy. You know, like lust, greed. Yeah. By following their dharma and avoiding these six temptations, a Hindu can break the cycle of rebirth and have their soul merge back into Brahman. But even though everything comes from Brahman, who is the one real thing in Hinduism, Hindus do, after all, have thousands of gods. So, let's take a look at them. First, there's Brahma, the creator. He created everything in the universe, but he is not the universe itself. Because that's Brahman. They aren't the same thing. That last letter changes a lot, apparently. He has four heads. The heads face each of the four directions to represent the four Vedas, which he created, and the four ah, okay. Yugas. He also holds a book, which wow. represents knowledge. Oh, and he rides a giant swan because he's just fancy. His consort <laughs> is Saraswati, right. the goddess of learning. Sorry. Vishnu, the preserver, is the second member of the Hindu oh, trinity. Yep. He preserves the world created by Brahma until it is eventually destroyed by Shiva. Yeah. He holds a discus, which he used to cut down anyone that tries to mess with his dharma, along with a conch, which symbolizes victory <coughs> and the five elements. Vishnu has many, many avatars, such as Krishna or Rama, who he uses to defend Dharma on Earth. Oh, and he rides a giant eagle named Garuda. Vishnu has... Oh, so that... Garuda is an Indian name. I, I see. Yeah, because, uh, you know, I'm reminded of what I learned back uh, back in the day, when we had that name Garuda. Garuda. Which sounds so cool, by the way. Yeah, I think that was our squad back in elementary school. Okay. <laughs> There's two consorts, the goddess Lakshmi and Budevi. Budevi is the earth goddess and Lakshmi is the goddess of good fortune and wealth. Next is Shiva the destroyer, the third member of the Hindu trinity. It's his job to destroy the universe in order to prepare for its renewal at the end of each cycle of time. The most identifiable of his features is his third eye, which he almost always keeps closed. If he does open it and you're in front of him, then you will have your face melted off. When not on making existence, Shiva enjoys long walks with his bull named Nandi. Keep walking, okay. Nandi, please. At the end of the Kali Yuga, the fourth age of the world, Shiva will perform a dance that destroys the universe. Sort of like me if I dance right now. <laughs> I know I'm gonna destroy this house, and I can guarantee you there. Which is odd because people have told me that my dance moves make them wish the world would end. <laughs> See, even him. So me and Shiva have quite a lot in common. Paravati oh, and yeah. Sati are Shiva's consorts. Shiva also has two sons, Ganesha, Ganesha. and Murugan. Ganesha Sorry. is worshipped okay. as the remover so of obstacles, and Murugan is the god of war. Ganesha holds a very special place in the heart of Hindus, due to him being the remover of obstacles. Okay. The elephant head is the most obvious clue to identifying him. He was actually born with a human head, but after Shiva cut that one off, he kind of had to make do with an elephant one. What the heck, Shiva? If you're Christian or Muslim, 
you're aware that your religion has a bunch of different denominations, like Catholics or Protestants, Sunni and Shia. Hinduism has these too. Hindus developed four major denominations, some of which have their own subdivisions. The Vaishnavas primarily worship Vishnu and Shaivas primarily worship Shiva and his sons. Smartas follow sacred texts like the Puranas, the Ramaya and the Mahabharata rather than the Vedas. They worship five gods and goddesses, Ganesha, Durga, Surya, Shiva and a preferred avatar of Vishnu. Finally, Shaktas worship the goddess Devi. Shaktas see Devi as the ultimate and eternal reality, like a feminine Brahman. Even though there are all these variations and more, the core beliefs of Hindus remain mostly the same. Hindus believe that Dharma keeps the balance in the universe. If the scales between good and evil start tipping towards evil, then something needs to intervene to fix the universe's Dharma. This divine intervention is known as an avatar. The literal meaning of the word avatar is descent. Avatars are gods that descend to earth to intervene whenever help is needed to restore Dharma. For example, when the earth was dragged underneath the ocean, Vishnu descended to earth as the avatar of Raha, a boar, and dragged the earth back out. In other cases, Vishnu was born on earth as a human avatar like Rama or Krishna, where he spent so his avatar's life she fixing. Or he, she or he has um, two avatars, which is Rama and what is I forgot the name. Okay. Yeah, but it's... Yeah, they, there are a lot of information going on. I yes, can't really remember. Yes, so Most of too it. much information. So. Well, let's continue. Dharma. So, the caste system. If you only know one ah. thing about Hinduism, this is probably it. People see it as an oppressive system that locks people in place based on their birth. And for a huge yeah, part of history, really? that's what it's been, unfortunately. Let's do a quick explanation of what the caste system is. Okay. In Hinduism, there are four castes or classes that you can be born into. There's the Brahmin, the priest, the Kshatriyas, the warriors, the Vishas, the traders, and the Shudras, the manual laborers. The main basis... This one I kind of knew because uh, a lot of our fans actually, or a lot of the movies that we actually watch, uh, sort of, sort of, um, you know, hit that sort of, saying when they said that this looks like a cat this is similar to a caste system or something like that mm, mm, mm. so i gotta get the idea because i researched what the caste system is because oh, it's been sticking okay. to my head so. for the caste system can be found in the bhagavad gita and the rig veda yeah. krishna says in the gita i have created a fourfold system in order to distinguish among one's qualities and functions the rig veda also refers to the four castes it says humans were created from parts of the god Purusha, the Brahman from his face, the Kshatriya from his arms, the Vaisha his thighs, and the Shudra his feet. Oh. This system was supposed to assign people functions based on their abilities, not their birth. If someone had the qualities of a Brahman or a Vaisha, they could fill those roles. Yeah. The Gita didn't restrict movement among castes, and the caste system functioned as intended for a while until a document known as the Laws of Manu came about Manu. around the 5th century BC, popularly referred to as the Manu Shmirti. They created hard rules for Hindu life. Two rules presented in it contributed to the way the caste system turned out. Manu states that the Brahman were the lords of all castes and he forbid moving among the castes. The caste you were born into was now the caste you're stuck in. If you give humans a hierarchy, they'd exploit it, and things will go sour pretty quickly. So that's where it started. That's where it started to fall apart because, you know, I know a lot of guys, or probably you guys as well, um, don't really take much into that caste system because, I mean, if you take a look at it without the uh, without uh, the religious part of it, mm. or without the uh, without that explanation, if you just if you're just an observer from the outside, you will really think that. It's sort of a, it really is oppressive because, I mean, what if the uh, what if the laborers uh, have someone that you know could benefit or could give some benefits or could actually go up into the system, mm -hmm. but then he's forced to be stuck to where he is because of that system, you know? Yeah. So like let's say for example, since we're poor, if we're in that caste system, or if we're in that belief, then 
we should not aspire. We should not aspire to go up higher. We should not aspire to become rich or become lords. If we're poor, we're stuck that way because we were born in that type of family. Okay, right? I get it. Yeah, sort of some something like that. I think. Let me know if I'm right. As time passed, <coughs> Hindus began thinking in terms of upper and lower castes. Soon, cleaning toilets, canning leather, and dealing with meat products no. were thought to be no. impure. The people doing those jobs became untouchables. Touchables. The lowest of the low, a people without caste. And the rest is history. The modern world has brought many changes though. Now Hindus mix freely while working together in the same businesses, attending the same schools, and generally just living together. But when it comes to marriage, many Hindus still stick to their own caste. But this too is changing, and on Hindu dating websites, you can actually see people list a non-preference for caste. It'll say, caste no bar. Mm. So, those are the nice. basics of Hinduism. It isn't even close to covering everything. One video simply can't do it. Hinduism is too diverse, too deep, and means too many different things to different people. But yeah. learning even the basics of this fascinating and ancient religion gives us an insight into the worldview of over a billion people. And I hope you enjoyed it. You can find uh, all the sources used in the description below. If you would like to follow your correct dharma, then please subscribe. If you're interested in supporting the channel, there are links to my t-shirt store and Patreon uh, also wow. in the description. Thank nice. you so much for watching. That is very well put. That is very well put. Mm. Yes, oh my god, there's too much information, guys. Yeah, I learned information. something new about the the um the about the Hinduism. Mm. There are seven cores of beliefs. Yeah. Uh, what else? Um, oh, I find it most fascinating that um regarding their Vedas and their uh, what they follow actually. Mm -mm. I mean, it it must. It must take such a long and time. And I learned to something about with. the caste system. Yeah. OMG. Yeah, I, I didn't mean, know that. It's a good thing that uh, at present, uh -uh. yeah, some of uh, or most nowadays don't follow that caste system. Yeah. yeah it's a lot of people now know that it's. It really is oppressive, I think. Yes. Yeah. And wow, that was so very entertaining as well. Yeah. Yes. Love There's it. I mean, I learned I learn a lot. I actually learned a lot actually uh, uh, from from learn. Brahman where they believe that the whole universe is the same. Yeah. You know, we we are all one. Well, I mean, except for Brahma, which is probably in the Christian's point of view, God Himself. You yeah. know, or I don't know. I'll, I forget the name of the Muslim, Allah. Allah. Oh yeah, yeah. in the Muslim is Allah. <laughs> yeah. I always get confused. Allah or Muhammad at the head. But uh, anyways, yes. Uh -huh. But anyways, yes, and kudos to the owner of this video. Well, it's a very in informative. Very informative, man. and he managed to he managed to like uh, compress that into something just the basics. But we've actually learned a lot. And he and he work a lot. He work put in, you know. Yeah, he put in a lot of work for it, man. Yes, kudos, and man. Jeez. Yes, it's that very. Is, that was nicely. That was nicely produced, man. So much information, very entertaining at the same time. Hey, if you yeah. haven't already subscribed to his channel as well, man. That's, yes. You know, that was very informative. Um, for us, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it has, it has some cute animation. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, guys, that was our reaction to the video of What is Hinduism? Thank you so much for suggesting this because we've actually learned a lot now. Yes. We feel like we've learned... A, every time, uh, because it's uh, history and cultural facts mm -hmm. on Wednesday, man, please do us a solid and keep suggesting on... Some things that you think that we might not know. I mean, we still have a lot. Yes, we have know. So please, let us know. Put it in the comment section down below. We'll react to it and at least we can learn something. We so do. I hope guys, we hope you like this reaction video guys because there is a top, top one recommendation of our free yeah, subscribers. Yeah, I mean, a lot of you guys have been suggesting this. And since we made a schedule, it will now be easier for us to do. Yes. At least now you know what the schedule is. So. Yes. Thank you so much, guys. So, yes. anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please do hit that subscribe button and also that notification bell. And let us know if you like the video by hitting that like button and also down in the comment section down below. So, that's it for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.